Hi guys, Gareth here, and this, today is a very sad day. This is the day we leave Tottenham, and I'm going to review my whole career with them. Um, unfortunately, there's this fucking thing in the way. I don't know how to get rid of it. I didn't want to restart everything up again. Or well, I do know if you restart the computer, and that will do. I didn't want to do that. Um, so yeah, but I'd like to just go through. This will probably be quite a long episode, 20 minutes or plus even possibly. Because I'm going to be reviewing all my transfers. You know, um, I can break down some key results, which and some key games that I've really enjoyed, and the ones that I remember. You know, there are some even from the first season that I still remember getting really annoyed at or really enjoying. You know, just some some crazy, crazy games were involved in this, and yeah, I'd I'd like to um, break down. You know, my 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 time at Tottenham. You did also see an interview. Um, previous to the, to this, um, that was done on Sims, um, or I might do it um, actually. I might do it just with me speaking, actually, so you can actually you know see me in kind of like a vlog style. Um, although it's supposed to be a press conference, but I don't have all the equipment like a green screen and stuff to make it seem like that. So um, yeah, but um, so let's get without further ado, let's get straight into it. We started our career with a nil-nil draw away. At Colorado, I don't think no, we can't go in and see that in a friendly. I was thinking, what the hell, you know, um, what the hell have I got myself into? I was struggling to beat, you know, American teams, teams I should be beating easily. You know, we had an American tour and won two games out of five. I mean, it's terrible, isn't it? Um, but and and we lost our first ever competitive game, three 0 I was just thinking, oh my god, I cannot believe I picked Tottenham for this. You know, I, I really, you know, I thought I was going to have a really good season and at least challenge for the title. Of course I ended up doing that. Um, the next, you know, we had a very good run of results. Uh, Liverpool was a very key game for me because that, that's the one I can't go and see these, which is really annoying because I can't actually remember who scored. Um, but, you know, that was the one, you know, that really got me thinking, you know what, actually, we can kick on. Liverpool are a good team. You know, we managed to beat them 3-1 at home. So, um, yeah, I think we really can kick on. Um, then we had a really nice run, not against the best teams, but we had a nice run, um, winning games, and came up against Celtic. Ah, this was a frustrating game, wasn't it? I, can't, I don't know if you can remember, it would have been episode about 20 in season 1, I'd imagine. I can't really, I can't bother to count all them, but it's about, it's between episode 15 and 20, I'd say. Um, oh my god, I was so annoyed after this match. Um, you can't go and see that, I don't think. No, it will be the one from this year, unfortunately. Um, I did end up winning a group, I think. I'm pretty sure I did, actually. Or did I? I can't remember now. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's all irrelevant. But um, I just remember it was such a high-scoring game. I was so annoyed after it. I remember just 969 days ago. I mean, look at this. 1,037 days ago. We've been here 1,037 days. Um, it makes me very happy to say that. Uh, then, you know, again, we went on a good run, being some not great teams. Okay, we beat Chelsea in the Carlin Cup. Um, drew with Arsenal, you know, it's alright. But then we hit these two games, which are very frustrating. Um, Netanya, away in the Europa League, I just thought I was going to go and dominate. We drew 1 1. And then we lost 4 1 to United. Um, I have since got my revenge on United, thank God. But yeah, um, but again, after them, just went on a really good run again. Aston Villa obviously six nil win. Uh, the big, the really big result from that. Um, obviously, would have been very happy with that. I, I remember that was that Adebayo's five goal game. I believe that was Adebayo's five goal game. I know his five goal game was against Aston Villa. God, it seems not so long ago. I mean, obviously, it was only like what around Christmas time it would have been when I would have recorded that. I'd imagine. But f I remember that that game like it was literally just a couple of weeks ago. Uh, there, there are some games that just stick in your mind, and that's kind of why I stuck by Adebayo for so long. You know, he had that legendary game for me. He's been, you know, a real servant. He's been kind of like, I'm trying to think of an example. Um, um, Leon Osmond for Everton and um, David Moyes. He's kind of been my player who's, you know, he's always, he's never been got grabbed all the headlines apart from obviously that game and maybe a couple of others. He's never grabbed all the headlines. You know, he's never been their most key player. But he's always been there, always been available and that's the kind of player I really like. He never once moaned about not playing or I can't remember him moaning. You know, he never 
we well, did have bad games, but you know he always made up for it, and he's just one of my favourite players in this game. I hate him in real life, but in this game I really enjoyed him. We got our own back on Celtic, which is just something I like to say, really. Um, looking for ah, now this. This was our last ever loss in the Premier League until we lost to Man City uh, this season. In 880 days. I've lost two Premier League games. That's a brilliant. I know it's not exactly that, but you know, um, it's about that amount. Uh, you know, that was a pretty poor. It was a terrible start to 2013, but my God, did it do that season end well? Um, I'm going to skip on now all the way to the end of the season. Obviously, got all the Europa League games. It's AZ Alkmaar and CSK Moscow, who we actually destroyed in the Champions League this season. Actually, Athletic Bilbao. Obviously, they weren't the toughest teams to go and play. We were able to win the, the ties quite comfortably and we managed to win the FA Cup as well against Chelsea which I was quite happy about you know um, 90,000 fans at Wembley and got the 2-1 on win and then went and beat them in the league and look at that a lovely just of mostly a lovely just string of mostly greens um, it was so good but now the Europa League final obviously this is my first you know European title Yes, the first one I ever doubted, even though it was against Fenerbahce when Chelsea is arguably a tough match. Um, I can't click on. I can click on this, can't I, to get to their team? Uh, I just want to show you how many players they've still got from that: Joseph Yobo, Krasic, Morales, Stock. Uh, I can't Gunnar there. You can't see it because it's got that thing over it. Dirk Kout, Musa Sal. You know they've still got their core. We've completely changed our team, so you know. That kind of shows how far we've come, um, and that they were in the Champions League the next season. It kind of shows that we did have to spend money. Um, anyway, moving on to the next season. Now, this was the uh, first game I've ever played in Football Manager against my supported team, Hereford United. Uh, I, I thought I'd get a friendly just because I thought it would be interesting um, to have. Uh, we did win all our friendlies and all our opening things until we got to Real Madrid where we drew, um, which I was perfectly happy with a, a really good pre-season that was and a lot of games but a, a lot of wins and a draw I also managed to win the Community Shield which I was quite happy about considering we, um, we lost to City first game of last season we managed to beat them 3-1 did they beat us 3-1? no they beat us 3-0 um, unfortunately um, we also won the Euro Super Cup on penalties also against Man City so I was quite happy with that as well um, this season I'm trying to look for a key key result 6-1 away against um, Liverpool is obviously a good match. I, I can kind of remember that one. I can't remember it perfectly, but um, I can remember beating them. Um, there's obviously one I'm looking for. Um, I believe it was this season. Uh, it doesn't come till later. Ah, this was a big, big turner for me. A big, a big game in my career. Away at Man City, we lost 6-1. City the kings of winning 6-1, aren't they? Uh, I did put on my backup team because it was the Capital Cup. I wasn't particularly bothered. Uh, by the way, we beat, uh, we beat Bayern Munich, just want to say that, in your face Arsenal. Uh, we actually did it in our home ground. And I believe we did it in away as well. Um, we got a draw away or something, no we lost away, okay. So we're really not that much better than Arsenal. Anyway, but this uh, this game against City, I just want to check the time actually quickly. Yeah, it's going okay. This game against City, um, just one of those games where you just, oh, you're so depressed watching a team get absolutely destroyed. The same against Swansea. It was worse against Swansea because it was the worst team I was against. Ah, here it is. The 7-1 against the mighty Manchester United. The mighty Sir Alex Ferguson fell at my knees. And they only had 63,000 fans. Is that a joke? Um, <laughs> um, in the stadium at the time. On a Saturday as well. Very, very strange that. But the mighty Sir Alex Ferguson fell at my knees. He kissed my boots. You know, literally... I absolutely, I went in there and I just said, I'm the best manager ever, and gave him the two fingers. That's effectively what it was. Uh, then we had our f first ever Champions League knockout round um, against PSG, who was what I was hoping to get in the final. Um, I think it would have been a much more comfortable game against PSG, but honestly, but um, I'm not going to go into that now. We've obviously won it, I just don't care, I'm so happy we won it. Um, obviously, you know, drew the first leg away, 0-0, and I was just thinking, you know what, if we, if we, Draw 1-1. Um, I was just, re I was hoping that we just wouldn't draw 1-1 or draw 2-2 or just 
I was hoping, you know, if we're going to lose, that we'd actually lose. Uh, but we managed to win 4-1 in the second leg, so that was all good. I was very happy after that, I remember. Um, West Ham, Cardiff, you know, t 11 goals, 2 games. I remember I've done that a couple of times, I think, actually. Um, I, yeah, we didn't win the FA Cup or the, um, what do you call it? Or the Capital One Cup in this season, which was slightly disappointing. Um, we couldn't actually compete in them. But obviously we won the Champions League, we beat City uh, there. That was a very, very tight game. Um, me against City has always been very, very tight. Oh, I've got the Arsenal. Of course, again, another tight round um, against Arsenal, which was probably a bit bigger than the City game in all honesty. And that, you know, Arsenal are our biggest rivals. But City, for me, have always been my biggest rivals. You know, they've always been the biggest challenge for me to overcome. We did it in the, you know, the in the final of today. Um, you know, it's just so good to see playing with Andrew Ayew. Yes, he scored a goal once. <laughs> Um, you know, Bale, Samba, the days when we still had Hummels, Demba Bar, only a season ago, but Lucas Leib, oh my god, I completely forgot he even existed um, in my team at one point. Um, but yeah, we managed to go and win the Champions League final against Fenerbahce, and we can actually go and see this. Um, obviously, you can see my team there, the front two of Demba Bar and Adebayor was so legendary. Obviously, Dzeko, I believe he was on loan. Was he? No, no, we had him permanently then, didn't we? Um, but yeah, the front two of Adebayor and Demobar was so good for me. I really did enjoy. I think, you know, although it wasn't my best season, I think this was my favourite season. Just because, you know, we had that Champions League. We beat Arsenal, we beat City on our way. You know, we had the game against... Um, of course, we're losing to City. Um, 6-1, it was nice to get him back in the semi-finals. With the 7-1 against United... Uh, 4-3 against Everton away, I remember, I'm pretty sure that was a pretty mental game as well, um, if I remember correctly, can we actually, oh we can't click on it, that is a shame, um, but anyway let's move on to the next season now, um, or, or this season that's just gone, and you know again we have Real Madrid, I, uh, that's because we got a link, I wasn't able to cancel that friendly, which I wasn't going to do anyway, of course I wanted to say, oh, if you, got, if you got Real Madrid in a friendly it's good preparation, we actually managed to win it 1-0 this time though, which I was very happy about. Uh, but the first one lost to Chelsea in the Pinchy Shield, and I was thinking, wow, you know, we've actually lost. So I just gotta. This came on last episode as well, didn't it? I think it did. Um, unless I'm just mistaken. It might come on before, but I'm pretty sure it came on the last episode. Not last episode, the last, the one before last. Um, but yeah. Chelsea in the Pinchy Shield, I was thinking, oh my god, we've actually been beaten by an English team. You know, have we finally, you know. Be, have we finally, you know, are we going to win the Premier League this season? I was thinking, you know, with the, all the money we spent on Alaba, uh, Jones, um, Vidal, Hamshik, I was thinking, it, was it re really worth it? We ended up losing to Chelsea. Of course it was in the end, um, just a fantastic season. Beating Chelsea 7-1 um, just um, about a month later as well. Um, brilliant, you know, it just made me, it, that was when I really thought, yes, we can kick on. Cause we, yes, we beat... Uh, Reading, Newcastle, Schalke in the Euro, Europa Su Euro Super Cup as well, West Brom and Leverkusen, yeah, I, I expected to win all those games. The beating Chelsea 7-1 at home, in fact, speaking of beating Chelsea, there's one very important game, this one, the one where, come on, select it, the one where I put up pretty much a whole backup team with some youth players in there, and we went and destroyed Chelsea. Anyway, I'm not going to talk any more about that. Um, but yeah, this game against Chelsea was a massive, massive game for me in my career that we actually managed to win. It was one of the milestones. Obviously, we went and thrashed an absolutely fantastic team. Um, so I was quite happy with that. But the fact that, you know, we did lose to Chelsea earlier in the season, it just made me think, yeah, OK, we can now push on. We can win the league. OK, I, all my doubts are just gone. Um, you know, United 3-3 away, fair enough. And it was just, you know, we are just kind of going through... The coming through the the years or the weeks, sorry, going through the matches, or winning every game pretty much or drawing the odd game. Um, that home draw against Ajax nil nil was pretty disappointing. Man. Obviously, Club World Cup final, very big game for me. I really wanted to win this because it's the one tournament I th I'd never won before. Um, and in club football now, I've done everything in terms of European at least. Anyway, uh, for a European team, I've won everything. I've won the domestic cup. I also haven't won every, every domestic cup, but I've won the domestic cup, the, uh, the other domestic cup, the domestic league, 
Champions League, Europa League, Super Cup, Domestic Super Cup, or Community Shield as we call it over here, and Club World Cup. So I've won everything now, Mike. And this is when I decided, yeah, you know what? I've won this. If I can have a good end to the season, I will leave Tottenham. And unfortunately, that is what's going to happen. I'm um, trying to find some other games. Obviously, away against Chelsea, 5 2. Pretty insane game, if I'm honest. Um, um, but yeah, it wasn't one of those ones that really stuck in my mind, you know. Um, I was already quite confident. This one was mental, though. I could not believe it. Pro possibly the biggest shock for me. This is what the match where I was most shocked by my team. We just went out and absolutely destroyed Everton. You can see, Tim Howard in goal, Jackie Elka. Okay, Shane Duffy's not amazing, he's still young. Uh, Neil Taylor's good. Uh, Morales, you know, they didn't have a poor team out. They had a perfectly good team, but we went and absolutely destroyed them, which I was so happy with. I think... Don't count... Don't... Don't um, quote me on this, but I think... I think that match I didn't actually do live. I think I something went wrong. Correct me if I'm wrong and if it did. But I'm pretty sure that one. I remember thinking, um, oh, people could think I cheated or something, which I didn't, obviously. But um, yeah, I'm pretty sure that one didn't go live. Um, I've had a couple of games. Um, the other, the one that I X that wasn't nil nil. Um, I believe. Not that one. Um, where is it? Yeah, the three 0 one. I believe that one didn't go live either. Um, there was just some problems. That it wouldn't work. Um, but yeah. Anyway, obviously the we went on just mental scoring run. You know, scoring at least three in a game. Then we had this. You know, we sc we just absolutely dominating teams. Then we had this little blip of th three, and I'll never forget this. City nil nil. Fair enough. You know, it was a home game. I was happy to take a draw from it. Just the fact we didn't lose. Wolves away nil no okay it's away at least we didn't lose I was still confident we'd win the league. Sporting Lisbon away lost 4-3. This was one of the most frustrating games because I thought I won it and then I fucked it up. That's what I'm going to say on that game. We did manage to beat Sporting Lisbon 6-1 at home so I just don't care. Then of course the end of the unbeaten run. I can't remember exactly how many games it was um, but it was over two years um, and just a fantastic run it was. It was unfortunate it didn't come to the end, but someone said, it doesn't matter, unbeaten runs, you know, they're just, as long as you're winning the trophies, it doesn't matter, because unbeaten runs, it's all psychological, you know, it's nice to have, but it doesn't really matter, no, not really. Um, Real Madrid, obviously, I couldn't believe that we went and won 4-2 at their ground, um, and then won 2-1 at home, obviously, beat, you know, won those two games fairly easy. This, though, is my all-time favourite game, I'm just going to say that. Um... Man City is so annoying that that's in the way. Dede, what a legend in that game he was. He was just such a fucking legend in that game. Look at those stats. 16 pace, 16 acceleration, 16 strength, 19 jumping. Physically, he is a monster. You know, he's got some great technical and mental stats as well, but physically, he's an absolute monster. So, yeah, that was his real good thing. But Bale in the last few minutes as well. The fact that Damian also scored two goals just perfected it. You know, it's the fact that you know, I didn't want to say I made Damiel because obviously he was terrible at me, with me, but um, the fact that he was a former player who couldn't finish us off made me so happy. Um, but yeah, that is the end of that. Now we're going to go through my transfers and my... This has been obviously a very, very long video. Oh my god, it's, it's going to be more than 20 minutes. Um, first of all, like I say, Gustavo is still to join, although unfortunately I'm not going to get to play with him. I do really like him on Football Manager, though, so that is why I signed him. Uh, but let's go through it season by season. Now, I... I'm someone I love doing a little bit of business um, with the transfers. I just I can't get enough of transfers to be honest. And some of these flopped the hell out of it, you know, just absolute terrible. I don't know what I was thinking in the first season. Some of my signings just really, really stupid. But some of them were fantastic signings. I've just got to say that. Um, first of all, we'll start with players going out. Anyone? really important going out. Obviously we've got Damian leaving but we made a profit on him. Aaron Lennon, le uh, Aaron Lennon? Aaron Lennon left as well the, and Kabor obviously left at the end of the season. No he didn't, he left I thought he left at the end of the season but he left um, halfway through. Okay well I was wrong. <laughs> um, but yeah so nothing really big happened going out. Coming in though we've got what is 
I'm going to do my overall um, actual player awards, um, but I'm just going to say this guy is up there. I, I have already decided I'm not going to release it yet, but this guy is fully up there, along with Samba, who was just fantastic as well. Considering we paid 14 million for Samba and his age, I didn't. Th I thought I'd have him for about a season and then probably offload him once we got into the Champions League or just use him as backup. But he's, you know, I, I signed Hummels and I, I just once I got Dede, those two just. Dede and Samba, they were just so such a good defensive partnership and Hummels just couldn't get in the team, that's why I had to sell Hummels, um, which was unfortunate. But anyway, that comes later. Demba Bar, obviously probably, you know, the best signing I've, I made. Um, 7 million coming in, he just was so good. How many goals exactly did he score? Um, 27 plus 13, that would be 40 goals in two seasons for seven million pounds and making a profit as well and a big profit uh it's just fantastic profit of 16 million i think it was uh baines for 20 million we managed to sell him for 20 million had a good two years or however long i believe i believe it was two years or one and a half actually years wasn't it so yeah i was quite happy with that uh valencia really good signing as well um i'm going through my good signings by the way Hummels, i still think was a good signing considering we got him for 15 million we did also make a profit on him um, Andrew, are you considering he stayed a servant to us? You know, another good signing. Edin Dzeko, loan fee of 95k per month. He did score some important goals, scored quite a lot of goals as well, considering how much we paid for him. And, and he was a loan, a good signing. Gokken in there, a terrible sign. I'm just going to hold my hands up and say he just did nothing. He really, I think he scored one goal or something like that. Uh, the, the other players are just irrelevant, they basically never play, but Fabrice Olinga, I would like to just give a shout out to this guy, I really hope he does well for Tottenham, or for someone, because as a youngster he scored, he's played about three games and scored two goals, uh, but now we're going to talk about my biggest flops, uh, Leandro Damiel is my biggest flop, I'd say, he just did nothing, and I don't want to say anything else apart from that, I made a profit and he went and did a good job somewhere else, so um, I'm guessing it must have just been my, me that was. It was just he wasn't the right fit. Tottenham, I should put it like that. Stefan Jovetic wasn't. He wasn't a flop. You know, he stayed for a while. Um, how's he doing at Juventus? Actually, it's interesting to see. Yeah, he's you know, he's doing average. You know, uh, he did better last season, but you know, he stayed for he stayed for the season. You know, um, or was it a season and a half? I think he stayed for actually. What was it? Uh, we'll we'll find out later. But yeah, Jovetic, considering he's 17 million, probably a bit of a flop. Brian Ruiz, I think, he was actually quite a good, he was a relatively decent signing, he wasn't one of my better ones, but I was quite happy that I made him. Isco, again, didn't really play much, a bit of a flop, um, uh, in low, already talked about him, so that's the first season's transfers all wrapped up. Oh dear. And we move on. <laughs> um, Lucas Leiva, terrible. Those guys were young, so they, they might be good in the future. Falcao for 25 million. I could not believe I managed to get him that cheaply. Uh, what a signing he's been. 25 million of absolute brilliance. And as you can see, now he's worth 32 million. We can make a profit on him. And he's a 29 year old striker now. It's, it's insane, isn't it? Uh, Smalling, he did alright for when he was there. Fran Fernando Lorente, considering he was a free signing, um, I was happy with him. We did manage to sign him for 15 million as well. So again, we made a profit on him. But he was a free transfer, um, he scored 7 goals in 17 games, so that's alright considering it was a free transfer. Uh, he did, yeah, he left halfway through the season. Um, Klein, obviously being a decent player, he's, I mainly brought him in just to um, be a backup. But a lot of my money, um, or a lot of the transfers I made, were on younger players or you know players I just want to gain. Um, other players such as Edin Dzeko, Kolarov, they, just, they were more there for squad reasons, so, and same with... Sheldon Shakiri, Olderville, Pastore. Um, but the two main signings of this season were Dede, who has been... I've already talked about him in this episode, but he is my favourite defender in this game. He's such a beast. Um, and Edison Cavani, who's also gone and done a good, done a good job. And considering he was 55 million, you could say we overpaid for him. Um, but he's gone and scored, what? Yeah, right, just over 30 goals in all competitions. Considering he's been there a season and a half, that's pretty good, I think. Um, and he hasn't played all the games, he's been sat on the bench quite a lot, he hasn't really moaned, so yeah, very happy with how he's gone. As you can see, some of my youngsters that I released just retired, <laughs> couldn't find a club, so they, get, they just thought pack, they'd pack it in. Um, players going out, Carl Norton, Moussa Dembele, 
Jan Vertonghen, Scott Parker. I was basically just looking to get rid of the players who weren't really too important. Stevan Jovetic. We're getting very good prices for these guys, which is why I, signed, I sold them. I wouldn't have sold them if I wasn't going to get a good price. Um, but, uh, Asu Cotto to Dortmund as well. We're going down. A lot of these were loans. Lorente eventually left for Napoli. Um, and that was it. So, um, obviously we spent a lot more than we brought back in. And now the final season, which I'm, you know, I'm very proud of, you know, the players, but the money I pay for them really should be doing that well. Shakif and I got him just so that he would be a coach, which now he is. I really wanted him as a coach. Actually, I'm going through my transfers out, first of all. Collar left after a season. Baines left after two seasons. Isco left. We didn't make a profit on him. I was extremely... That's the, that's the one player... That's the one real regret I had. Isco, he came in for 17-odd million. Didn't really do anything. We we didn't make a profit on him. We made a loss on him. Uh, Brian Ruiz, we did make a loss on, but I, I feel we got the value for about the 4 million that we did, did make a loss on. Uh, Hummel's got 30 million, so we made a profit. Javier Pastore, obviously, 15 million. Smalling, we bought for 10 million, sold for 10 million. Demba Bar, we got a big profit on. Edin Dzeko, we made a 0 0.5 million pound loss, um, but I wasn't really too bothered. Uh, Lucas Leiva, I was just so happy to get rid of him, to be honest. Um, no, I wasn't, but he was, I don't know, he was, he was a player that was good, but now that I've got Vidal, I look back and, at Lucas and I just laugh that I actually had him. Um, he's a good player in real life, though. Martin Kelly, 8 million to United, just, they never really did anything. Um, but players coming in. First of all, David Alaba from Man United. He was, I, this is someone, because Baines had had a terrible second half to the second season, so I had to get rid of Baines. Uh, I was, I've always wanted Alaba for Tottenham, you know, he's always been a little bit too expensive, but I thought, you know what, first choice player, first player I want to go and sign is David Alaba, so I went, forked out 60 million for him, but it was fully worth, I think he's had a great season, David Villa came in for free, fair enough, you know, did his job considering we got him for free, um, Kushito as well, another left back, um, in all fairness I did need another left back, but I didn't need to spend 35 million on another left back, that was just a complete mistake, I forgot I had actually signed Alaba, uh, for some reason I thought, I must have thought Alaba had rejected me or something, I can't quite remember now, um, and for some reason I clicked, um, ooh, I clicked um, confirm on his thing, but I'm not too bothered, you know, he's had a good job, and it hasn't really affected me, uh, it might affect the club later, Vidal and Hamshik, just, you know, two great players who've done, done their job uh, this season, Vidal has been more in the team than Hamshik, but I was happy to get both of them, uh, Adil Rami, you know, been on the fringes considering he's a 35 million player, certainly. Um, but again, he's done his job well. Um, he's served as backup, and that's what I really wanted from I think looking back on it, I don't know why I sold Hummels and brought in Adil Rami. Rami, a worse player, who I paid 35 million for, 5 million more when I got for Hummels. I don't know why I did that, strange. Maybe someone wanted to leave. I, I can't quite remember. Michael Richards, 5 million, literally just bought in so I could have more English players in the squad because I needed them. A uh, bit of an annoying thing to do, but, you know, I had to do it. Um, Neymar on a free transfer, just properly. I say Demo Bar was my bargain um, because he was there for two years. But I think if we had another year with Neymar, he'd probably be a little bit better. He was free as well, although his wages were much more. And Phil Jones, 80 million, equaling the uh, transfer record, I believe. I don't think we actually paid more than that for a player. I think that was our record as well, so um, 80 million for Phil Jones, but again, fully worth it, had a really good season with us, and I'm really looking forward to using him with England in the future, because he's still young and he's got a really good future. So that wraps up the transfers. Now, who were my players, um, who were my, you know, my players of the thing? Um, so, I've got a few awards, and I'm going to go through them. Oh my god, my players are away on holiday. Right, I want them up here for this, just so that I don't forget someone or anything. Right, first one I want to say, um, best servant, uh, which is, this is, goes to the player who, you know, served me the best, just was all round so consistent and not necessarily the best player, what well, specifically isn't the best player, but was a really good servant, and that is Marwan Flaney, never the best player, you know, well, sometimes in some games he might have been, but, oh, this is going to be really long. Yeah, it's already half an hour. Um, I might actually chop this in half or something. I don't quite know. Uh, no, I'll just, I'll just leave it. I'll just leave it. 
you can watch if you want to. If you don't want to, fair enough. You know, I understand it's a long video. Uh, but Fellaini, an absolute boss. You know, he just I, I signed him. He was my first signing with the club. I think he was anyway. Um, he's one of my favourite players in real life. He's just been such a good servant. Um, you know, you take a look at his average ratings over the two seasons, and it's around about 7.4, 7.5 over the two years so yeah that is just absolutely fantastic now I've got best player and this is this is simple for me Gareth Bale you know it's simple isn't it um, he's won three uh, Premier League players of the year I'm hoping he can win a um, you know, player of the year in terms of Ballon d'Or or whatever um, that's not what we want um, has he actually I'm best player in Europe I'm trying to World Player of the Year runner-up. I'm on the European Champions Best Player, Best Player in Europe runner-up. And two. Oh, he's been some runner-up. So he's just unlucky that fucking Ronaldo and Messi are there. Shortlisted for Golden Ball. I think he could win it though this year. Though I think he could. Um, I'll be voting for him as England manager. That's for sure. Um, not because you know he was a just because he was with me at Tottenham. Just because he was so vital for me at Tottenham. Uh, now I'm going to move on to best signing, and that was Demba Bar for me, just because seven million. He came in when my squad was worse, and we still managed to achieve, to achieve brilliant things with him. We achieved pretty much the same amount as we did with um, Falcao and stuff. Falcao scored more goals, but whatever. Um, now is my young player of my you know time at all. I don't know what to call this. I'm just going to call it my my Tottenham awards. My young. Tottenham player award goes to of course who else Stephen Corker um, again he's been like a servant to me as well and that he's just you know he's he's just done his job when asked and he hasn't moaned got on and done it and I really hope that the next manager does carry him through doesn't just offload him because he is worth 16 million can you imagine that for a player who's not you know in your starting 11 you can get 16 million for but he's young I hope Tottenham manager decides to keep him um, now I'm going to do my Tottenham 11 and I'm doing this off the top of my head uh, Tottenham all time 11 um, I'm just trying to make sure I'm not forgetting anyone quickly uh, yeah I've, I've got it so in goal obviously we're going to have Hugo Lloris who else um, there's no argument about that um, right back is Kyle Walker this may shock you but again uh, same thing as with Neymar on being bargain of the or signing of the you know time in Tottenham um, but Phil Jones has only been there for one year. Kai Walker's been here for three, and you know he's again not really moaned too much, and he's done his job when asked. Um, and the first two seasons he was absolutely fantastic, so that's why he gets in the team. Obviously, I'm um, all every day of the week. Deddy and Samba um, as the centre back pairing, easy for me. Um, and despite only being here for one season, I think David Alaba was my best left back. I just think that second half of Baines' second season was that bad that it takes it away from him you know he did cost us didn't cost us matches but he did make a lot of mistakes he, I would say it's a tie but I, I just stick Alaba just ahead of him just because he was so good Alaba um, although based on the money we spent um, Bale uh, Bale Baines um, as left back um, but I, I, can't, I really can't decide but I'm going to go with Alaba for that in the midfield I'm going to go with Fellaini and Sandro again Fellaini is such a servant um, but he's always been the first team Sandro such a servant in that he's you know always been in the squad never mo once moaned again like so many players some players have moaned but some players just like Sandro he's not moaned he's just whenever he's got an opportunity to play you know I do feel guilty for not you know playing him every game but to be honest video is just a little bit better um, and you know he's still played what plus 40 games this season 42 games this season in all including coming off the bench in all competitions and three friendlies as well and he's done a great job so um yeah uh, right winger Antonio Valencia of course it is um yeah, again you can't argue with that um for me just been so <coughs> consistent with his performances not necessarily with his shooting in particular a bit frustrating but with his performances he's been very very consistent uh, Bale obviously on the left wing don't need to say anymore up front it's a very very hard choice to make but I'm going to say Falcao and Adebayor, yeah, you heard me right, Adebayor. Um, just because he's been in, been there all that time, you know, he's always been there uh, for me. And 
I think he deserves a special mention. Um, Demaba and Cavani would be on the bench though. Neymar wouldn't get in, to be honest. Um, just because, yeah, who cares about him? <laughs> no, I do. Um, is there any other anything else that I could do? Um, I guess I could. Oh, I know what I want to do. I want to go and see how Hereford did, don't I? But I want to just um, go over the two seasons in terms of the table. So this is my worst season in terms of the Premier League. Um, and we got 94 points. Tottenham's most ever points total in the Premier League ever. So I was really happy. Um, obviously we managed to get ahead of Arsenal, um, who were challenging um, us. Although City did actually challenge more come the end of the season. But I think, I, as if I remember right, Arsenal were second for a long period of time. Um, yeah, I was happy to see Wigan stay up as well, of course. Um, but yeah, winning the league... You know, just us happy. Just that was my winning the league. Nothing else would have been fine. Uh, second season, I believe this was our yeah, this is our biggest points total, and we actually went unbeaten. We did what Arsenal did better. <laughs> we got more points than them. Uh, we got the most ever Premier League points total ever, which I was really happy with. Um, and yeah, again, just completely dominated the Premier League. And then this season, of course, it's pretty much the same. Dominated the league, just really, really happy with how it went, and yeah, um, that's gonna, I think, wrap it up. Um, what I would like to do, um, just at the, as the end of this, is resign from Tottenham on on this. Just to, uh, yeah, I just I have to resign, and I'm not gonna. I said at the start of the video, you would have already seen an interview. I'm actually gonna do an interview afterwards of me just doing like a kind of a poly not apologetic thing but just a last a final speech you know like what Ferguson had what Moyes had like what all managers have when they leave after a good spell you know I'm gonna have just a final speech I say to the fans it's more to you guys um, as kind of fans but it's kind of to the fans trying to yeah that's just, it's just you know it is what it is and I, I can't believe I just did that oh I'm sorry. <laughs> oh my god! Mourinho's taken over. Yes. Oh my god, he might actually. He's got no club. Oh my god. If Mourinho takes over, I'm never getting that job back. <laughs> I, I might. He, he tends to stay, he stay at teams for a short amount of time. That's kind of what I like to do as well. Uh, yeah, whatever, I'll do that. Um, Mass Exodus. Bob Marley, yes. Um, from Tottenham following and in departure. Director of football. Uh, I don't know how to say his name. Has <laughs> I, I signed to him? I don't even know how to say his name. Has announced that Asma Island's departure from Tottenham has resulted in several members no of the club's backroom team leaving. No fewer than 13 have said to follow me out. Um, Alex Hogan, don't give a fuck. John Carver, don't give a fuck. No, Gary Neville's left. That's one of the funny people. Ray Wilkins as well, very good coach. Um, they've lost uh, lost a lot of very good coaches and. Jeff Terry is a good scout. He got me a, a, a few good scout reports. Can I actually get him on the England team? Yeah, I already have someone there. You're not getting that job, mate. And the 21s. They have a coach. That, yeah, there you go, Neville. Give you a job. Uh, but it's just a shame, you know, to leave. But if Mourinho takes over, great. They've got a fantastic manager. They could easily go and win the Premier League and the Champions League again with Mourinho. Benitez has also been linked. Antonio Conte is he the former um, AC Milan guy? Um, no. Ah, oh, he was the Juventus. That's what I would have been thinking. Also managed Barcelona in this um, thing. Luciano Spalletti. Ah, here we go. This is the man. Yes. Um, I don't. I don't know why I've heard of this guy, but I've I always really like him. I just always. Spalletti, I, I don't know. I don't know where I've heard of him from. Uh, you know, obviously, I, I think a lot of people would have heard of him, obviously. Um, but I don't know. I just always liked him. I've never really known anything about him. Hope I wouldn't mind if any of those get the job. To be honest, Rafa Benitez probably be my least favourite to get the job. I don't really want Man City manager taking my job. Um, but it's a shame so many left. Anyway, I've got to wrap this up. 40 minutes. Uh, is that a good um, ending? If you've actually watched this far, um, say, say, um, what can you say to prove that you've watched this far that no one else would say? 
just literally type Anan out. Um, but yeah, Anan is out. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Thank you and goodbye.